I've been a long-haul trucker for over 15 years. Seen just about everything you can imagine on the open road. But nothing, absolutely nothing, could have prepared me for that night in the middle of nowhere, Texas. It was a typical run, if you can call any part of this job typical. I was hauling a full load of electronics from Houston up to Chicago. The route's familiar. The truck was running smooth. And I had my favorite tunes playing. The day was uneventful, and as night began to fall, I decided to push through to make up some time. Around midnight, I'm deep into this rural stretch of highway. Not a soul in sight for miles, just me and miles of darkness, with only the occasional deer darting across the road to keep me company. I had just passed through a small town, and the next one on the map wasn't for another 80 miles or so. The perfect place, you'd think, for some peace and quiet. But it was just too quiet, even for me. Then it starts. A light rain, just a sprinkle at first, but soon enough it's pouring so hard I can barely see past the hood of my rig. I slow down because the last thing I need is to jackknife out here in the middle of a downpour. The wipers are going full tilt, but they're barely keeping up. Suddenly, I see a figure on the side of the road. As I get closer, I can make out that it's a woman, soaked to the bone, waving frantically. Now I've heard all the stories, all the warnings about picking up hitchhikers, but she looked genuine and it was pouring rain. What kind of person would I be if I left her out there? I pull over and she runs up to the passenger side. She's young, maybe mid-twenties and terrified. She climbs in, thanking me profusely, shivering from the cold. I crank up the heat as she tells me her car broke down a few miles back and her phone died. Bad luck all around, it seemed. She's quiet at first, just staring out the window at the storm. I try to make small talk, help her relax. But she's jittery, keeps looking over her shoulder like she's expecting someone to follow us. I asked her if there was someone else with her, maybe someone else that needed help too. She shakes her head, doesn't say much after that. A few miles down the road, she suddenly perks up, points to a little dirt track veering off the highway, says that's her way home and asks if I can drop her off there. Something about it didn't feel right. It's the middle of nowhere rain pouring down, and this dirt track looked barely drivable. But she insists, says her house isn't far down that path. I stop the truck at the start of the track. She thanks me again, hops out into the rain, and without looking back, starts walking down the path. I wait a moment, watching her disappear into the night. Something about the whole thing felt off, but what could I do? I pull back onto the highway, thoughts swirling in my head. Not even ten minutes later, my gut twists. I see red and blue lights flashing behind me. I pull over, thinking maybe I got a taillight out or something. Cop comes up, asks for my license and registration. Routine stuff. Then he asks if I've seen a young woman walking along the highway. Chills run down my spine as I tell him about the girl I just dropped off. Turns out she's been missing. Escaped from a nearby facility where she was being treated for severe psychological issues. She had a history of luring truckers into dangerous situations. My blood ran cold as he told me. Said I was lucky I didn't follow her down that track. They'd found others who weren't so lucky left in abandoned farmhouses in the area, robbed or worse. The officer thanked me for the info, advised me to be more careful in the future. I couldn't hit the road fast enough after that. Spent the rest of the haul glancing in my rear view, half expecting to see her running up behind me. So that's my story. Made it to Chicago without any more incidents. But I'll tell you. It was a long time before I stopped overthinking every shadow in my mirror. Now, I stick to the well-lit stops and never pick up hitchhikers, no matter the weather. 
It started off like any other long haul, heading east from California towards Chicago. I picked up a load of computer parts in San Jose and hit the road early afternoon. The drive through the desert was brutal as always. Scorching heat, mile after mile of nothing but sand and cacti, but I'm used to that grind. Somewhere in the middle of nowhere, Nevada, my truck started acting up. The RPMs were all over the place. It was chugging and sputtering like it was about to die. I pulled off at the next exit, which was just a lonely desert road. There weren't even any buildings or gas stations around. I popped the hood and saw a bunch of black gunk caked up around the engine. Fantastic. I spent over an hour out there in the 110 degree heat, sweating my ass off trying to clean off the engine components. Finally got it cleared out enough that the truck seemed to be running properly again. As night fell, I got back on the loneliest stretch of I-80 you've ever seen. Not a soul around for miles, just my rig's headlights cutting through the inky blackness. I turned up the radio to stay awake, singing along to some old road tunes. That's when I noticed something in my rearview mirror. At first I thought it was just my sleep-deprived eyes playing tricks on me. But as I looked closer, I could clearly make out a pair of headlights way back there, keeping persistent pace with me, haunting me. No way someone's actually following me out here, I thought. I'm just being paranoid. But those headlights weren't falling back or passing me. They stuck to my tail like a barnacle, no matter how much I accelerated. An uneasy feeling started creeping over me. I pushed the pedal down and my rig shot up to 80. The mystery driver matched me, those demonic headlights burning in behind. At this point, my heart was pounding. I watched too many creepy truck driver videos and every possible horror scenario started flashing through my mind. Was it someone trying to run me off the road and steal my cargo? A deranged serial killer just messing with me? Or worse, someone I'd pissed off in the past who was looking for payback. For a while, it was just this demented game of cat and mouse under the pale desert moonlight. I'd speed up, they'd speed up. I'd slow down, they'd mimic me. All while putting some ungodly distance between us. My nerves were shot. I was running on fumes after driving for so long already, but I was too scared to pull over, too terrified of whatever was stalking me. This went on for what felt like an eternity. Just me, my rig, and those two soulless eyes in the mirror glaring from out of the darkness. I cranked up the music as loud as it would go, trying to drown out the maddening possibilities in my head. Finally, after several hours, the road curved and sloped upwards, taking me up and over a ridge. As my trailer crested the hill, I looked down in the side mirror at those haunting headlights. That's when I saw them. Two bloodied, skeletal hands gripping my trailer's edge. My heart nearly stopped. For a split second, I could have sworn I saw a decaying face appear in the rear view, grinning at me through shredded, rotting flesh. Paralyzed with fear, I slammed on the brakes as hard as I could. The trailer jackknifed and whipped around violently, spinning out of control and metal screeching across asphalt. I don't know how, but I managed to wrestle the rig to a stop. The trailer fishtailed to a halt beside me in a deafening screech of tortured steel. I sat there, frozen, white-knuckled on the wheel in total silence for what felt like an eternity. Every hair on my body was on end. I didn't dare look in the mirrors again didn't want to know what was back there. Eventually, I threw the truck into gear and just rolled away with the trailer crunched up and sparking beside me. I didn't stop driving until I hit a truck stop in Utah, over 400 miles away. I haven't taken any long hauls since. Just short routes sticking to busier roads. Can't get those images out of my head. I was driving a load of furniture from Atlanta to Denver. It's a long haul, and I like to drive through the night when the roads are quieter, 
and the stars are just me and my thoughts. The route took me through some remote parts of Kansas where the landscape is more open sky than land. So there I was, cruising down a particularly lonely stretch of I-70. It's around 2 a.m. and the only light for miles is coming from my headlights and the occasional distant porch light flickering in the vast emptiness. I'm listening to some late night talk radio show to keep my mind occupied. The hosts talking about ghost towns, which set an eerie tone to begin with. Suddenly my radio starts to static. I smack it a few times. Old school fix, right? But no good. It just dies completely. No big deal, I think. I'll just ride in silence for a bit. But that silence quickly became suffocating almost tangible in its density. As I'm trying to shake the unease settling in my chest, I notice something up ahead on the road. At first, I think it's debris, which is bad news on a highway. But as I get closer, I see it's a car, an old sedan parked sideways across both lanes. No hazard lights, no street lights, nothing. Just an ominously empty car blocking the road in the dead of night. Now my first thought is, there's been an accident, so I slow down and pull over, figuring I might have to help out. I grab my flashlight and step out, and immediately the air hits me. It's dead silent. No wind, no distant animal sounds, nothing. It felt off. I approach the sedan, flashlight in hand, and it's empty. No sign of a driver, no sign of a struggle. The doors are all closed and there's no damage to the car. It's like someone just parked it there and vanished into thin air. Feeling more nervous by the second, I walk around to check the back of the sedan and that's when I hear it, a soft thumping sound. I stop, heart racing, and listen. It's coming from the trunk. Now every horror movie I've ever seen is flashing through my mind, but I think about how I'd feel if I were stuck in there. So I pull out my phone to call 911, but of course no signal. I debate for a moment, then decide I have to open the trunk. I take a deep breath, steal myself, and pop it open. Nothing. There's absolutely nothing inside. No body, no bomb, no stash of bugs, just an empty trunk. I'm baffled and frankly freaked out. Then I hear a car door slam shut behind me. I whirl around, flashlight slicing through the darkness, and there's nothing. My truck is just as I left it, doors closed, lights off. But then I see it. The driver's door of the sedan is now open. My heart skips about 10 beats. I didn't open that door, I'm sure of it. Panic setting in, I sprint back to my truck, lock the doors, and start it up. I maneuver around the sedan, my eyes glued to my mirrors until it's out of sight. I don't stop looking over my shoulder until I hit the next town where I pull into a diner parking lot, finally under some bright lights. I told a local cop about it when he came in for coffee. He said they'd check it out, but I never heard anything more. Drove the rest of the way to Denver with the cab lights on and the doors locked tight. Never did find out what was going on with that car or who slammed that door and maybe that's for the best. Thank you for watching. If you found these stories gripping, don't forget to subscribe for more spine-tingling content. For another hair-raising tale, check out our suggested video. And if you're hungry for more eerie encounters, dive into our playlist featuring similar chilling narratives.